hope you are well. I haven't posted a video in a while, as the last couple of months has been a time of healing for me. I have never seen this phenomena before, or even heard of it, despite it being an enchanting display of colorful light in the cold sky, not so unlike the breathtaking northern lights, and it makes me think of how much wonder we must miss out on while indoors. Had I not walked outside just then, instead of 20 minutes later, I might have never known about it, or experienced it for myself. I missed out on intense northern lights the other night, as it too only lasted for about 20 minutes. Indoors is such a predictable and monotonous environment, but outdoors so many things happen all the time. Every moment is unique and precious, and that is very clear here in the north with the shifting seasons. There is so much fleeting beauty to behold. I wish I could walk the earth always and take it all in. northern light now in the sky, even though it's not very intense, just to be alone down here on the dock is very special. And then above me it's white northern light shapes like an angel shape. It's really not very intense northern lights. It looks almost white in real life. I learned that the cone cells in our eyes that see color well do not work in darkness. Instead, rod cells are more light sensitive but do not give us color vision. If the light of the aurora borealis is not very intense, we therefore cannot see its color. Cameras do not have this limitation and can show us the truth. Everyone else is sleeping. I think it's maybe 1.30 at night. I've often seen rainbow colors coronas around the sun and moon this winter, but I was astonished at the intense pastel colors of these more unusual clouds as I stood on the porch after sunset. They are aptly called rainbow clouds, iridescent clouds, polar stratospheric clouds, and mother of pearl clouds, palemomol in Swedish, and they are caused by super cool droplets of water or tiny ice particles diffracting and reflecting light after sunset or before sunrise, when the light of the sun below the horizon still reaches the uncommonly high up clouds in the extremely dry stratosphere. The air temperature must be around minus 80 degrees Celsius for ice crystals to form up there, and yet it was only around zero degrees where I stood. In this video, I had intended to talk about how strange it feels when the world changes so much during a few months' time span as to be nearly unrecognizable. All the sights, sounds and smells, and the weather and temperatures being so different an experience it might be another world. Winter can seem almost post-apocalyptic at times. But this winter has been very mild. No ice, no snow. Some days have looked more like spring than midwinter, with green grass on the fields. For years now, every winter seemed less wintry than the one before. It's been a while since the really white ones, when the ice lay so thick on the ocean you could drive a car to the islands, and large icicles made stalactite caves underneath the docks, 
where one could play and hide in a true winter wonderland. I read somewhere this warmer climate makes the stratosphere colder, thus creating more polar stratospheric clouds. And though it is lovely to see the pastel shades these natural clouds create with the light of the sun in the far north and far south of the world, some of them allow for a chemical reaction between global warming CFC greenhouse gases, harmful man-made chemicals, and ozone, which damage the ozone layer that protects us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. So while I would love to see rainbow clouds again, I also hope we have few of them until the CFCs are no more. Three days in, there is still some to do, but we're getting there. It's starting to feel a lot cleaner already. Unfortunately, these chemicals stick around for a very long time, and illegal production continued after the ban, slowing the healing of the ozone layer. It is a shame such a beautiful phenomena be entangled with human crime against the planet that creates such wonders. The rainbow clouds themselves are associated with spirituality and hope, with promise and inspiration, which is exactly what I felt afterwards. It is a chance to look at the things that occupy your mind from a new perspective and to move on. It is also seen to be a message from loved ones who have passed away. I had just lost my grandmother and have been spending time with my family lately. My sister came to Sweden from Australia, where she lives, and brought her one-year-old daughter, Lysia, my parents' first grandchild, with her. I only met her once before, this summer, and she has grown so much since then. Losing my grandmother created a great void in my mind. She was the last of that oldest generation I grew up with, and losing her made it feel like a lost connection to my childhood as well. Made it feel so very distant, like a different life. I wish I had more clear memories of my time with my grandparents when we were younger. Thinking of my grandfather always reminds me of the good in people, and my grandmother was so caring of me and my siblings. we get used to places, or even people, we too easily lose focus on them, especially these days with so many distractions. I must remind myself sometimes to look around more, to take it in with a fresh gaze. It keeps my mind light and present, paying attention to the hen picking in the grass, to the small birds in the trees and the sunlight caressing the ground. That reminder may not be needed for some people, but for an introspective INFP personality like myself, it is easy to get lost in a mind of deep thoughts. That is partly why I love dancing and traveling so much. As someone said, when you feel down, look up. 
Straighten your back and feel the energy, determination and hope return. There is plenty of wonder to encounter, and one never knows where or how it might happen. Some of the most magical moments are completely unexpected and sudden. We have a limited time in this world and should surround ourselves with what makes us happy and inspired as best we can, I think, to reach our full potential and be our best selves. For me, it also helps to keep the home tidy. If my home is less messy, so is my mind, and that makes me more present in the moment, more inspired and able to get on with things. That is why I don't really care to have too many unnecessary possessions. They can feel like a trap almost, and I can feel a longing for a more aesthetic setting. But I do also have an odd interest in medieval weapons and tools, perhaps because of my love of fantasy and interest in history and the lives of people through the ages.
take care of yourself and I will see you again soon. Bye.